So um, our discussion today is about the data transmission mechanisms. So data transmission mechanisms um, uh, say uh, this are you are aware of these things. So there is uh, what you call as a serial data transmission and parallel data transmission. So if you are aware uh, we are talking about two things. We had talked about two things. One is information, other is data. Uh, information is uh, what do you say? Process data. You can say a simple sense. There are a lot of other definitions to this, uh, but uh, the data which is given a context that is information. Now, uh, all these zeros and ones they can be transmitted. The binary digits can be transmitted either in parallel or in serial. So the serial transmission has three types you can broadly classify into asynchronous synchronous and isochronous these are the three uh, modes of uh, data transmission serial data transmission so parallel parallel the bits are in parallel say the parallel cables you will find still within your pc uh, in your desk uh, what do you say desktop older desktops you will find cables like this pata parallel advanced technology attachment that is the pata cables the hard disk to the motherboard then uh, cd drive to the motherboard all those things i mean the desktop pcs not the laptops so then the newer ones you have sata cables the serial advanced technology attachment so these are this is not a single line rather uh, multiple data lines are there there are 15 pin and 9 pin uh, sata cables so uh, this is now used for connecting your motherboard to your CD drive or motherboard to the hard disk. So this is a SATA and PATA cables. These are this thing. So um, there is a serial transmission and parallel transmission. So um, which is better? It depends. Uh, USB, USB is much now faster than parallel transmission. Even if you are able to transmit all these data parallelly, at this end you will have to convert to a parallel to serial converter that is another sh shift register okay parallel and serial out you can consider like that you will have buffers all those things so this is a serial transmission which is better that is always a question but uh, uh, serial transmission speeds are catching up uh, catching up the usb 3 is very fast so um, then there is asynchronous and synchronous transmission asynchronous and synchronous basically uh, sync means clock so asynchronous does not have any clock signals to time the transmission uh, to um, what do you say uh, act as a synchronization signal there is no clock transmitted uh, with the uh, signal there is no way to uh, ensure that a synchronization is done with the help of a clock rather you will have a start bit and a stop bit this is what you do in your 8051 8051 you have this start bit stop bit and data that is the way in which it is done so that uh, um, is a asynchronous way of transmission there used to be a, a, a communication data communication protocol which is called as ATM not your automatic teller machine rather it is called as asynchronous transfer mode in the earlier days it never picked up because uh, uh, it was it was popular for some time then it was felt into disuse because the internet came and IP based uh, transmissions uh, were uh, becoming predominant so asynchronous transfer mode used this uh, mechanism of transfer uh, so ATM um, uh, yeah the approach was to use something called as the virtual containers just like you have virtual machines you have virtual so it allowed you to transmit voice, video, audio, all this data together in one container. Container in the sense, a uh, frame like structure which is assigned a start bit, stop bit, all those uh, synchronization uh, things for the transmitter and receiver to uh, synchronize. Per se there was no clock. In synchronous transmission, uh, you have uh, what do you say, data along with the synchronization signals they are sent. Now this is what is now the mainstay of your telecom network, your telephone network, public switch telephone network which you call as a landline or whatever. Uh, there are, uh, this is an optical network. These are known as two names what is called as SDH, synchronous digital hierarchy and this is uh, the US, uh, so there, this is the European name for this network and this is the US name which is called a sonnet synchronous optical network 
So the data rights on these two vary. This is one problem in uh, uh, the data data networks. The data rights they are determined not on the basis of technological considerations, rather on the basis of politics. Who is the best? Which one is the best? Like that. So the Europe sticks to a standard. U.S. sticks to a standard. There is no. Um, uh, a common standard in this also, but they are by and by and far they are almost the same. So here in synchronous large blocks of data are transmitted, you will have also synchronous synchronous signals, uh, synchronization signals. So um, then coming we have isochronous transmission. Isochronous transmission is a thing which combines the features of both these. You have uh, uh, large blocks of data which is transmitted, and you will derive the synchronization from the data which is transmitted. You will uh, say shifts in the data bits. Say so that will be acting as a start and stop bit. So one way to do this is that uh, uh, transition in the data bits that will give you an indi indication of which is a start and which is a stop of the frame. So large blocks of data are transmitted asynchronously without that is without any clock pulses and the timing information is derived from within this data by observing the uh, transition of the data. So uh, some transition will be specified in the standard as a start and stop. Say where can we find this use? You can say in audio signal, audio uh, video transmission. Video transmission for instance if you take the case of a digital uh, television network you are transmitting say frames at the rate of say 30 frames per second. Uh, you have to transmit the entire frame at in one go. You can't have you can you cannot transmit a small part of the frame then the person has to wait not like that you have to transmit the entire frame that is one 30 frames per second so one frame at in one sec uh, what is 30 frames in a second means uh, so uh, each frame has to be transmitted as one block and uh, the synchronization pulses are within those things within this block itself so that is the isochronous trend it's also used in this uh, secure communication networks isochronous transmissions then uh, we uh, go to switching so switching has to do with uh, what do you say uh, how we interconnect various nodes and how uh, a very uh, what is a reliable form of communication is meant uh, is possible between this nodes so you we saw different topologies like star topology mesh topology we discussed in the uh, initial part the same thing uh, you if you we, we, if we talk in the case of a larger network so the cloud always specifies something which you don't know what is it's a black box sort of thing and uh, you would have some intermediate nodes which will be interconnecting say for instance A and H these could be termed as intermediate nodes uh, which are called which can be called as switches so this is a switched network so switch network allows you to um, what do you say interconnect uh, between various networks in a reliable manner so uh, the switch networks these can be of three types one is what you call a surf circuit switch network the other is a packet switch network and the third one is a message switch network so circuit switched network packet switch network and message switch network and uh, the internet as we see as we all know internet is a packet switch network and we will come across two types of packet switch network which is called which are called as datagram networks and virtual circuit networks okay so uh, three types of uh, networks and circuit switched message switched and packet switch networks okay so um, uh, this we start off with a circuit switch network so um, just a moment I think someone has joined the class no right only 48 people today so um, circuit switch network 
So circuit switching is your traditional way of uh, connecting to a sender and a receiver or a node, two nodes. They are circuit switch means they have physical connection between these two uh, devices or these two terminals. Uh, how it is done? That is through a series of switches. This is how your uh, telephone network works. You say as PSTN, P is uh, what do you say? Public S is switched telephone T and N for network PSTN. PSTN means public switched telephone network. That is the technical name for your old landline. What do you call as a landline? Actually, when you dial a number, you are in fact operating a series of switches. Say, for instance, um, you uh, dial your STD code 0485. 0485? Yes, 0485. Um, then you press the number 2515. That means it is uh, 0485 will be directing you to, I think it's uh, Trishur. Yeah and uh, 2515 that is indicating which is the uh, area and then again the local exchange and then uh, 636 that will give you the particular uh, subscriber in that exchange so in fact the series of switches are operated when you uh, activate it actually when you make a call and circuit switch network involves having a dedicated path between the two nodes during the entire uh, duration of data transfer entire duration of communication there is a dedicated physical line you can trace so, so this is uh, through these switches this is happening so and it involves three stages one is the connection setup phase then once the connection is established that is what you, uh, uh, your telephone networks work like that. You make a dial, you dial a number, then you get a ringtone, uh, what do you say, callback tone. You are hearing COVID-19 message. So, uh, and then uh, that is where the call is being established. Once the call is being established, once the call is established, you will have a connection between these two people. And then uh, there is the transfer of data. You, the, who has to say hello? This person has to say the, uh, the this is the calling party, then this is the called party. These are, uh, uh, that is it. The called party has to say hello. That is what, you, it often happens that these two people say hello at the same time. Yeah, uh, it is like that. So then um, your, um, once this happens, you transfer the data, the conversation proceeds and then when they put down the headset hand, uh, headset onto the cradle this is the cradle the phone where it is kept it is called as a cradle technically it's called as a cradle just like the babe, baby is in the cradle same way uh, then this, this this is disconnected or it is torn down it is tear down face so these three faces are there you see here uh, uh, it's uh, even though you perceive the communication as near real time, it's not a re near real time. Uh, the say um, there is a delay. There is a delay, small finite delay which we cannot uh, understand. So I find it very marvelous even now. Uh, the person, uh, uh, two of my students are sitting all the way in Ladakh and they are attending the class in near real time. I am uh, in the southern end of the country and taking the class. Yeah, it's uh, really a very uh, astounding thing. And uh, so this, there is a circuit, the connection establishment phase. There are intermediate switches at each phase. There is a delay. And finally, uh, there, once the connection is established, a message is relayed back. That is, yeah, a connection is established. Then uh, there is, uh, what do you say, uh, the transfer of information, this is a timing diagram of sort. And then once information is uh, exchanges over, that is the connection is toned down. So this uh, lines just illustrate how the there is a propagation delay. There is a propagation delay, the, the transmission delay through this. We don't perceive it. 
we don't perceive it we speak as though in near real time so all of us are now utilizing a network and imagine we are on different networks which are interconnected say i am on kerala vision some people are on reliance some on bsnl some on whatever network they have uh, and all these are able to interoperate that is another thing you call from a reliance number to a bsnl number you are not always sure you'll get uh, there are uh, 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 rules which says uh, uh, call termination uh, things are decided by tri telecom regulatory authority of india they decide what should be the way in which uh, who should pay how much to intermediate switches all those things are part of the regulatory mechanisms so um, circuit switching um, has advantages a lot of advantages advantages in the sense that uh, once you set up a channel that is freely uh, that is full dedicatedly available to uh, the sender and the receiver no other no one is going to interfere in this uh, it's a reliable way of communication uh, it's still used you know still used in the sense you would have come across uh, hotlines between countries say india and pakistan has a hotline hotline in the sense the pakistan uh, president or prime minister picks up a phone and calls hello mr prime minister means the uh, it's uh, our prime minister is not going to pick up the phone there are a set of protocols hotline is just the uh, name for that there are protocols they will uh, say in prior through other channels that our prime minister will make a call at this time uh, that is there that is usually it is done then they will ha uh, say in the press as well we made a phone call and we discuss these things a edited version of the things will come out in the press but there are dedicated hotlines for instance between north korea and south korea they have to avoid a, a all out war they have the they have a communication channel like that they can take, pick up a call and say this yeah this is it's a uh, it's an immediate response is there so uh, but circuit switching the the main problem is that uh, if no data transfer takes place uh, during this uh, circuit connected phase there is uh, uh, the wastage of bandwidth bandwidth is very precious you know and uh, so it is a inefficient use of resources then um, and this the call setup time it will it will take few milliseconds then the reliability is another factor reliability in the sense if some of the nodes fail uh, you can't uh, you need the during the communication say for instance all on a sudden one of the nodes gets washed away in the flood or uh, so um, the communication will be disrupted so this is not uh, um, what is a, a data it's a circuit switching is primarily for voice great traffic voice traffic it's not uh, don't mistake it for voice over internet protocol voip this is your plain old telephone systems or pots pots or you say public switch telephone network so this is uh, uh, purely that case it's not um, uh, the usual um, Uh, the usual um, data network communication it's not for usual data network communication packet switching packet switching what you do is that this is what the main city of the internet how the packet switch networks transfer the message through the network whatever data is there it is broken down into small packets and sent now who determines the packet size it de it's determined by the protocol uh, say if it is a tcp ip connection there is a definite size for the packet there is a header and a uh, uh, header and a trailer not a footer uh, to uh, indicate uh, uh, address details or other information control information and uh, it is forwarded through the network now i'll give a best analogy for this say if for instance i'm writing a letter to my friend say um, in the same uh, so i am writing a letter so i do a very um, what is it um, 
tricky way so i i have a matter of say one a four size page what i do is that i take 10 postcards you know a postcard there is something called as a postcard so uh, i think it costs now one rupee or 50 paise something like that so you i wrote some of the messages in one postcard each part of the message in or each of these 10 postcards then i put a number one two three four uh, up till 10 in each of these and i put it in the postal box so at the sri garim post office i post it and i expect it to receive it in trishur my friend is in trishur so um, you are sure you will get all these things together it depends our post network is so efficient that they will take all these things together and deliver it but uh, there can be a possibility that some post uh, some of these uh, letters or the postcards might go to Trivandrum and then go uh, again go to Cochin and then um, from Trivandrum it might go to Cochin then it might go to Alive it might go to Idiki then it might reach Trishur some postcards might directly reach Trishur it can be it it need not be in this the same sequence so packet switch network is like that a routing is not predetermined uh, and uh, it will go to you have the source address and the destination address in the packet so i have the sender address that is my address and the friend's address so the network ensures that it is sent from the source to the destination some way you don't reserve any bandwidth you will go through some switch uh, somewhere uh, there are in fact some uh, some things are uh, 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 already already written into this the protocols but uh, per se there is no uh, you can't you say you cannot say that this packet should go through this path but there are some geographical things say for instance I could specify that uh, my letters my postcard should not go through Kotem or you can say uh, make a rule between countries say all traffics from India to uh, Gulf countries should not be routed through Pakistan or all traffic outbound traffic through uh, what you say uh, Japan should not be routed through China from India to China uh, India to Japan should not be you can write a geographical rules that is where the autonomous systems come into play the border gateway protocols all those things you can have well set rules there you can avoid geographical rules there so that is there you uh, so that uh, we are very scary of those things so uh, that uh, we are very scary that china is monitoring everything so in fact uh, india has set up a lot of uh, investment in mongolia mongolia is a country where uh, which is near to china it is almost an independent country under Chinese influence. It is a lot under Chinese influence. But India has invested a lot in setting up internet gateways there. We have set up uh, mechanisms to monitor the traffic from and to China. So uh, we are also on the, uh, it's a, all these hide and seek games are there. It's all um, part of the business. Now there are two types of packet switch network that is what do you call any any doubts on this so far any doubts about this yes no nothing something anything yes so uh, this is a datagram network and uh, other one is what you call as uh, what is a virtual circuit network so we'll discuss these two topics in the um, next session uh, next session um, and uh,